December 2nd, 2010, the most controversial World Cup in football history was announced. The winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. As Qatar prepares to wow the world with their forthcoming World Cup, they had 12 years to prepare for to build an entire country infrastructure football stadia hotels amenities transport everything Business has come to a standstill as hundreds of millions of football mad fans wait to hear if Qatar will be awarded the right to host the FIFA World Cup. What will it mean to the region if the world's greatest sporting event comes to the Middle East for the very first time? It was taken as a bit of a joke, the bidding for the Qatar World Cup. It was not taken seriously by many people. Most people thought it was just a joke and that they had no chance of actually winning it. Nobody recognises Qatar as a footballing nation. They also have very large infrastructure issues which need to be overcome and they don't really have the, the amenities in order to, to host such a large event on such a world stage. After winning the bid for the World Cup in 2022, Qatar set upon the biggest infrastructure project that's ever been seen to create a World Cup, building an entire cities. The World Cup final will be held in Lusail, which was built from scratch, which now hosts so many major arenas and amenities that just did not exist 10 years ago they've also had to invest heavily in the the transport links the airports needed upgrading they've built an underground rail link system other major problems included hotels, accommodation, where to house up to one million people who were to visit this tiny, tiny nation. A nation which is half the landmass size of Wales. That is how small this nation is. And they have to host up to one million guests during that month of football. Where will they host these people well they had to firstly build more hotels lots and lots of hotels they've had to try to get people to rent out their own properties to guests they've even built a whole camp for people to camp out it's like a, a camping city and it's one of the largest and most ambitious of building projects ever undertaken. Now, why why would they bid for a summer World Cup where they know the temperatures are into the 50 degrees Celsius mark in the summer? They know that. FIFA themselves will have known that because this will all have been part of their bidding process. Hence why we now have a 
Winter World Cup to combat the heat. But notwithstanding that, why did FIFA allow this bid to be successful? Given all the points that I've just raised, all the infrastructure problems, the fact that they, they didn't have any stadia, they also have a lack of interest in football in Qatar. I've tried to find out the average attendance for football matches, but official statistics seem quite difficult to come by. The reports that I've come across have ranged from 100 people at a game to 600 people at a game. And this is for the top teams in Qatar. So the interest hasn't been there even after they got the, the decision to host the World Cup. But why did FIFA allow it to happen? Well, before the the bid was even successful, there was huge rumours surrounding the bribing, uh, possible bribing of FIFA officials, which turned out to be spot on. The 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. As the Qataris celebrated into the night after the decision was announced, what they didn't realize was just how corrupt it was that they were given the World Cup. As this translator for FIFA testifies to one of the meetings, Kind of like a laugh, like, I mean, like one million. That's all. Diallo um, said, "Well, one point five million. One point five million dollars was offered to each FIFA official for their bid for the Qatar. The promise of one point five million dollars and the promise afterwards of support for the Qatar twenty twenty two bid. And to prove just how deep the corruption went." Set Blatter, the president of FIFA at the time. Did you know that Qatar had won? Yes. No, I, I, I knew it because... <laughs> Michel Platini had informed you. Did he explain why the president of France was telling him to vote for Qatar? No. Michel Platini was the vice president of FIFA and the president of UEFA at the time. And also a former footballer, one of the best footballers of his generation. He has since been indicted for corruption. Following a 2015 investigation by the FBI, a number of FIFA officials were indicted, were charged and were under investigation for corruption. Revealed the extent of what had happened. Now that everybody's concerns were well founded and it was found to be corrupt, we will forbid did they strip Qatar of the World Cup? No. The World Cup plans were to go full ahead and this is a major problem. This goes far deeper than the whole corruption. That is one side of the coin. The other side is the lack of human rights in the, the host country and that is a major problem amongst most people and right now everybody's focusing on the LGBT rights of the visitors who come into the country. Quite rightly so homosexuality is still illegal within the country and is punishable with prison so people are rightly concerned about visiting a country where, where the human rights is so backwards however Qatar have found a statement Not 
imprison people for being gay in for, for the period of one month. That's one thing, and the other, in fact more pressing concern, is the rights of the workers who have worked tirelessly to bring everybody the World Cup and get it ready on time. And this is sad, this is the saddest part of the entire process. According to a Guardian investigation, at least six and a half thousand people, migrant workers, have died in the period between 2010 when they were awarded the World Cup and 2020. That's at least. Now the official figures of World Cup related deaths are hard to come by because Qatar do, do not record the deaths as World Cup related deaths. They record them, a lot of them, as natural causes, natural deaths. And the reason for this is because these are deaths which are related to heat stroke. Workers were m made to work in conditions up to 50 degrees Celsius in the height of the summer. And this naturally would cause a lot of problems within the body. It's logical and people died. There are other reasons, other situations such as people killing themselves and there's been no answer as to why. But the one thing that I can, I can fathom is possibly it's due to the workers' rights and working working conditions over there because migrant workers are bound by a system called the kafala, which means that you have to hand over your passport so you can't leave the country. What is the kafala system? The kafala or sponsorship system defines the relationship between foreign workers and their local sponsor or kafir, which is usually their employer. In most situations, workers need their sponsor's permission to transfer jobs, end employment, and enter or exit the host country. Leaving the workplace without permission is an offence that results in the termination of the worker's legal status and potentially imprisonment or deportation, even if the worker is fleeing abuse. Workers have little recourse in the face of exploitation and many experts argue that the system facilitates modern slavery. So as I said, was this partly the reason why some people ended up dead? If you don't believe me, check out these testimonies from actual employees. I sent an offer letter before I came to Qatar. I was promised that I could be given a free accommodation and I was to be provided with food. They promised me of 1,200 Qatar years as my basic salary. But now they are giving 830 Qatar years. I could not understand. But I was not alone. My other Kenyans guy, 18 of them, were treated the same. I call it a scam. I had to pay 120,000 Kenyan shillings so that I can get the visa, working visa. From June 20th, when I came here, I worked on July and August and September without payment. I worked 12 hours a day, so I was expecting to be paid the four hours per day as overtime. I was not paid. We have to struggle so that we can now clear the debts we used to come here. They started forcing us to sign a five-year contract, which is very different from the contract we signed back in the Philippines. Just forcing us also to work more than eight hours a day, and we are even forced to work during our rest day. And if we refuse, she'll threaten us that she will send us back home with nothing. 
for our salary, sometimes she'll collect all our ATM cards from us with the PIN code and deposit our salary on time, but she will be the one to withdraw. And not only that, she began also to deduct 200 real each from us every month. In our accommodation, many times also we experienced no electricity, no water for maximum three days. We couldn't cook or go to toilet. Being a migrant worker in Qatar sometimes is like being in an open air gym. It looks like you are free, but in a way, you are locked in. I only count days to get myself back and unite back again with my people. So, as you can see, it is so much worse than just simply FIFA accepting a few bribes for this World Cup. There are actual lives being torn apart. The families of the deceased are left to pick up the pieces without knowing what actually happened to their loved ones and without compensation from any authority for loss of, in most cases, their breadwinner. कंपनी <laughs> घरे भेजा देते हम अपन घर ही कमाबे खाबे नहीं भेज लो के सर यो पनी एउटा सानो बनाएर मैले पठाए थियो मदिरको घर पमा कि एउटा भिडियो सानो बनाएर त्यसको घर फ्यामिली को पठाउनु तर के दिएन हामी सँग सबै रेकर्ड छ सबु छ मेरो दिदीको एउटै खाता छ जसले कोही दियो होला त्यो खातामा रेकर्ड हुन्छ तर आजसम्म कोही कसैलाई हाल खबर कोही बुझ्न पनि आएन कमाइ वाला छलि त विश्व अथि छलि भरोसा छलि अ बीत गेले त कोइ बड समस्या भ गेलिस अथि से कमाइ वाला नि रहे त कोइ समस्या भ गेलिन नै महाजन से ले तीनो के ओते पैसा भेट ले सब महाजने के पड़ गेले सो लाइव्स टोर्न अपार्ट families torn apart lives ended and all for what to bring the people together as qatar said in their world cup bid it's for the people to bring them together this is not bringing people together this is doing everything but now on the 20th of november we will see a world cup which is tainted by the blood of six and a half thousand minimum migrant workers who have perished along the way in order to bring the world a football tournament. As a football fan myself, I can only shake my head and in disbelief that this tournament is even going ahead. How any football team can go out onto a stadium where so many people have lost their lives just to make that stadium is beyond me. Then we have one of the most famous footballers in the world ever, David Beckham, one of the most richest, one of the most famous footballers that we've ever seen has been hired at a rate of $10 million to paint a perfect picture of tourism in Qatar. Qatar has surprised me with a wide range of great experiences you can have in just 48 hours. The people are so warm and welcoming. Qatar really is an incredible place to spend a few days on a stopover. David Beckham has sold his soul for the blood of six and a half thousand migrant workers 
during this World Cup, to their credit, players are coming together to to shine a light on the human rights issues, but specifically those of the LGBTQ community, which is right, and I agree with it wholeheartedly, and it's a good thing. But I'm not seeing anybody fighting for the rights of these workers, their families, all over the world. So the question should be asked, should this tournament go ahead? No, absolutely not. Not with so many lives lost. It's an absolute travesty. In my opinion, the lives and the families, the lives destroyed, the families destroyed, should at minimum be compensated by FIFA and or by the Qatari government for their part in this. FIFA may have been guilty of accepting bribes, but Qatar were guilty of offering the bribes in the first place. Getting the World Cup at any cost 